Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I am your host, Jillian Leslie, and I like to build businesses on the internet. In fact, I've been talking about this a lot, but David, my husband and partner, and I are rolling out something new called Milo Tree Easy Payments. It is all about empowering you as a creator to take your fate in your own hands and to go directly to your audience to start a membership or to sell a product. And this is the easiest way to get paid. Seriously, you know, I will talk in this episode that's coming up about how I am thinking in my own business that when everybody is zigging, I want to zag. So if you've looked into starting a membership, you will see that there are all of these bloated solutions that are expensive. And we said, hey, why don't we go in a new direction? Why don't we set up a way for people to get paid? But then we say, go, we will integrate with your email service provider and put your customers directly in that. We say, go use a private Facebook group to host your membership or do it on Zoom, do it on a Discord server, do it in a private Instagram account, do it on Slack, do it just as an email newsletter, whatever way you want to connect with your audience. We say, great, we give you the tools so that everything hooks together and we give you a dashboard, but you get to do it just how you want. It's kind of cool if you are thinking of starting a membership or let's say you wanted to do a one-off teaching session, a webinar, or sell a, say like a three-month program, you can use Milo Tree EC Payments to do that as well. I hope you can see how excited I am about it. I think it's a game changer. Uh, my goal is to help you get paid. If this is interesting to you, head to milotree.com slash beta tester because we are working with our beta testers. We're in our beta launch. I'd love to talk to you about how this would work. And even um, hopefully just me saying this might get you thinking about what kind of membership could you build where you have recurring revenue and where you're not dependent on social media networks to push your content out, but this way you get to speak directly to your audience. Now for today, that's a lot, for today's episode, I have Jeff C. back on the show. So he is a social media and visual marketing expert. You might have seen him on the weekly Tailwind Facebook Lives. I've had him on the podcast before. What I love about Jeff is he is right there at the cutting edge of what is working in social media. So every so often, I love picking his brain. We talk a lot about how things have changed through the pandemic, how people want to be entertained, how people have lost a sense of who to trust, and how to really connect with your audience in a whole different way. For the most cutting edge tips on social media, I bring you Jeff C. Jeff, welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you are here for a part two. Awesome. I am excited to be here, Julian. You know, I always love talking to you and your audience and you were on our show not very long ago, so that was always fun. So this is, this is exciting again. Exactly. Well, that's why I was like, Jeff, come back on my show because I feel <laughs> like you get to see a breath of kind of what's going on in the world of social media, business building, and I want to pick your brain. Cool. I'm all for it. Pick, pick away. Okay. So let's start with a place that I feel has gotten to be a little controversial, which is Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And before we started recording, we were just talking offline about Pinterest is changing and what are you seeing on your end? Yeah, so there's a lot of frustration. We talked about that uh, um, about Pinterest because um, the days of just like posting your content with like and then just repinning the same stuff over and over. I mean, I did it. I think we've all done it. And we saw this traffic and we saw our Pinterest account grow and all that stuff. And that doesn't work anymore. 
um, you know, on the Tailwind show, we are always constantly talking about creating fresh pins, which is the, you know, taking new images and not, you know, reposting all the time and the, the really video coming into the, the, the platform and then idea pins. And, you know, a lot of times there's a lot of joking that, you know, Pinterest is trying to be Instagram and all this other stuff. And recently in the news, I know their stock kind of uh, went down a little bit because of the, they reported that they didn't have as, as a growth like they used to. Now revenue grew, but the growth of like monthly active users, which everybody looks for on social, uh, social media platforms fell a little bit. And I know people that freak people out. I got all sorts of messages and all this sort of things. I still think Pinterest is around to play, uh, around for uh, the long term, and I think because it's so much different, and we've talked about this before, that it's not a you know a social media platform per se. Even though they're trying to give the, those little hints of like you know putting reactions on there, and they're trying to make it more like Instagram, it's still mostly a visual search engine. And so when you come out across that way, it makes sense for you to put your content there and create content, especially for long-term stuff. I still believe for Pinterest for long-term traffic and long long-term it's a great place to put your content. Now, it's not as great as it used to be when we first started, but it's still a place, I think, uh, especially for your audience, for bloggers, to still to, to uh, put content there and optimize for that platform. And are you seeing a lot of value with idea pins because they take time to make and you can't put a link to them? And I know then you go, well, they can grow your followers and that signals to the algorithm that your account is good and should show right. your other pins. But that's a roundabout way of getting traffic. And how do you feel about that? So I didn't like, I was like you, it's like, listen, I couldn't have a link back. What in the world? Why would I spend time on that? But the more that I've done it, I do see the long tail of it actually growing my account and getting my um, pins in front of more people. So it's, I, I still think it's a good thing. Now, recently, they just allowed creators to start making money from idea pins. They're allowing this link for some of these affiliate things and for some of uh, the, like if you're doing, especially for the fashion industry, there's ways that you can tag products now in those idea pins. So I think Pinterest is, you know, they did the big push and everybody started doing that. And whenever Pinterest says to do something, it makes sense to do it because they're going to highlight it. It's like every other platform, Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, all that stuff. So now there's, they, I think they've heard a little bit about the frustration that some of the creators had on creating idea pins and not getting, you know, where's my link kind of a thing. And they're starting to allow that. I think long-term they're going to allow those kind of links, those, especially for products. I think, um, Right, And so I'm testing some things right now, even trying to see if I can get digital products in there. If they could start allowing digital products and some things that we could link to, even if we had to use a company like uh, Square, I think is one of their affiliates, as long as, a, I mean, one of their partners as well as like um, Shopify. Once that really integrates heavily, I think you're going to see more and more idea pins. But then again, you got to go, okay, if everybody starts doing that, how am I going to stand out in the feed? So you always have to like measure okay, first adopter, spending all this time and effort, is it really going to boost me enough to make sense for all the time I'm spending? And then when everybody else jumps on the bandwagon, is it too late? Do I need to do something else? So it's always a balancing act and it's tough for small businesses. I get it. I mean, we only have so many time, uh, hours in the day and you know, what should we spend our time on? I still think it's worth taking your content, especially if you're coming from a blog perspective, is creating that pin and posting it to um, Pinterest. And then as you can streamline your processes and use tools like you have that uh, make it easy, that you start taking that content and creating new images for it, creating some videos around it, maybe taking some idea pins and saying, listen, here's here's some of these pins, here's some things. This, you know, you can find more by following my profile, that kind of thing. I think that is a good thing to do. And I think Pinterest is still really, really important for bloggers. Mm. When I go to Pinterest right now, I feel like they it's all about products. Like right. I go look for kitchen ideas and I see kitchen sinks and kitchen cabinets and things to buy. So how do you stand out as, say, a DIY blogger or something like that? Is there still room for those food bloggers where it's not about products? I feel like Pinterest is really leaning into product discovery. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and I and I think also you, you train your algorithm. So, I mean, mine, mine will be different than yours. And I still think with the search thing, it's still really 
important that you really work on your your search you know your titles and your descriptions stuff we've talked about forever so you do get surfaced in search when people are searching for like something maybe a recipe or something besides a product got it i also think if you don't have if you um, are doing those diy things and you're wanting to stand out from the products like you know how to how to make the best chicken soup or whatever it is that you really lean into video and you think of ways of just not showing a picture of my soup you know but how can I do something that is very creative that will stand out? And yes, it's hard. Yes, it's going to take some thought and you're going to make things that don't work. But Pinterest has been one of those platforms that has always not um, slapped you down for testing things. Mm. And so the more you test, the better you have an idea and you don't really get your account like delisted or, you know, I mean, it's okay to experiment. And I think people are scared to experiment. And standing out in the feed with video, one of my favorite video pins that I saw, and it was really quick, and you guys have may, may have seen it if you do Pinterest, but it was a shot of somebody put a coffee cup underneath um, a Keurig machine, but it was upside down, and it was spilling all over it, and then somebody turned it right side up. And it was for like Folgers or one of those coffee things, but it was that split, you know, simple thing that caught your eye, and then it was like, oh, you know, and it was really quick. So how could you do that with, you know, a soup recipe or something that you know this has a little bit of entertainment or, or or humor into it so it's hard but i think that's what's going to stand out more and more on pinterest i think that what you're saying is what had worked for so many years years in the internet remember like five years right. in the internet is an eternity it was i just take a pretty photo put a headline right. on it pin it on pinterest boom magic traffic and what you're saying is as especially after the pandemic and we have been on our phones and at home and we want to be entertained mm -hmm. that if you can do go that extra mile extra little bit and find an angle a twist like put a little more brain power in the development of your content you can see larger rewards doing it the same way over and over again might not pay off in the same in the same way as it used to yeah, and agree? one of my uh, one of yes, I do. I think I totally agree with that. And one of my favorite, and here's a great example. One of my favorite, um, uh, like Pinterest educators, is Jennifer Priest, and she mm -hmm. does really cool stuff. And one of the things she talks about all the time is like she was making these things with IKEA. And, you know, IKEA is always a white background, like a wooden thing in the middle, and it's very very simple. And those were really popular. And she's like, man, I just I can't break into this. So she made it with a black border, and so her pin started surfacing in those IKEA feeds, but it had that black and it stood out yes. and so then the 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 click started happening and traffic started happening and so it's great to see what other people are doing to get an idea of what's popular mm -hmm. then you look at it and go okay if it's popular how do i stand out i mm -hmm. i did a long time ago i even have a little mini course on it is where i took like i was speaking at social media marketing world and they gave you a, like your the picture of the um the you know social media marketing world and had your like little round photo in it you know, for like this, I'm a speaker kind of thing. Well, I took that exact graphic and I made a video of myself popping out of it and pointing to like subscribe. And that still gets a lot of traffic and stuff because it's so unexpected. So if you, if you can uh, make people, you know, click on something that's unexpected or, and the, and the thing that's really interesting and is a struggle is we are training ourselves with TikTok and all these other short form video contents uh, to, to that's got, that's what's working. People's attention span is even, you know, they always joked it was like the, a goldfish. Now I don't even know if it's a goldfish. If it's, we have attention span of a goldfish, it's probably even less than that now. Absolutely. I remember when Vines came out yeah. and there yeah. were six seconds and I was like, who would ever care about something for six seconds? And then you saw the creativity. Like people who got it and could create six second content like killed it. And that's, I think, what we're seeing with a platform like TikTok. It is possible to create really engaging content in a short window, but it's it takes a little extra work. So if, if for Pinterest, if I were to say to you, okay, I have limited time, I have mm -hmm. a limited budget, where would you say if I have these three areas, which is regular static pins, videos, and idea pins, how would you balance my how would you split my time through those 
So I'm a big fan of repurposing. So I'm, uh, you know, hopefully you already have a strategy of taking, like when you're writing a new blog post, making a Pinterest image and you have that on your, on your feed. So that's already set. Continue to do that because I still think that's valuable. It's part of your process. I would do, so here's what I do. So like when I do my live show, I do social media news live and then I do stuff for Tailwind is that I take clips of that and I create a, um, like a, a title page, a title for my idea pen, like one slide of it is the title. Sometimes it has video, sometimes it's just static. Then I have a clip of like, if it was you on my show, we would, I would ask you a question, you'd answer it. That would be a perfect little section for my idea pen. And then I have a, 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 another panel that says, hey, follow me because of this, this, cause I share great content. So that's super simple. That's three panels, it's done, I've already done it. So I post that as an idea pen. Well, I wait a couple days a week, and then I take that and I upload it as a video pin, which allows me to have the link. So you can create idea pins and then repurpose them to be video pins. And so I like to do both because one, you get the link on a video pin, and two, you're giving Pinterest the algorithm, you know, the, the idea pin, which is really exciting for them on the algorithm. And some of those things that I, just those three panel things, uh, I keep getting emails from Pinterest saying, hey, your pin just got 10,000 views. And so there, people are watching it and um, I'm getting the best of both worlds. So I would do it and, and kind of wait it that way. I would you know, use video, do idea pins, continue what you're doing, but I would really look at repurposing some of that stuff on your Pinterest account. If people want to see what you're doing, what is your Pinterest account? So the people they can just follow at Jeff C, J-E-F-F-S-I-E-H. Find me there okay. and uh, they can see my idea pins. And uh, yeah, they're, they're really simple, but they really, they really work. And so. I think that that's true too, which is not to overthink it, more like put stuff up and see what happens. I always yeah. teach this concept of B minus work. And, <laughs> you know, B minus is still above average, but it's doable. And your goal is to just get stuff out rather than overthinking it. You're much better. It's much better if you can get five ideas out there, rough, and right. see if any of those start to gain traction. Look for where the traction is. And, and also get get beyond your bubble. And I think, mm. especially as marketers, we always think like, okay, this isn't working, or I'm why aren't people liking my stuff? And so, first of all, look at your habits. When you scroll through the feed, how fast are you scrolling? I have a feeling it's pretty fast on Pinterest. You guys are flicking by that stuff. And you got to remember, that's probably how the rest of the people are doing it as well. So how are you catching that attention on how are you getting that click or that stop or, you know, thumb stopping content is something that everybody talks about. So that's you. So how are you look and take a little journal. So like the stuff that you are stopping on, just pin it to a secret board and then collect that and see why did and then go back and analyze. Why did I like that? What made me stop and do something like that? And then also like I get my kids to do that and my wife who's not a marketer and like how are they using it because we always think that why isn't it working Pinterest is broken you know mm. Tailwind doesn't work all right, this here's, stuff. Wait, here's my favorite Pinterest hates me right and they may not hate you but everybody might not, might not like your content listen I've been there I posted stuff that I'm like this is the best thing ever. It's so funny. Everyone will love it. Nothing. Crickets. And then I'll post some picture just right, like I threw together in five minutes and it just goes got bonkers. And I'm like, what are these people? So you never know. But look at other things. And the other thing is, too, is, is um, look at re the reports and your and drill down into your audience. Who's at, who are you actually trying to get? Who is converting for you? Where is your money being made? That's really, really important. And I get really frustrated because in my industry, there's these reports that come out saying which platform's the best and which one everyone's using. And, you know, uh, one of them, Pinterest is hardly even mentioned. And I'm like, what is this? And it, the, the problem is it's going to, it's going to marketers. How are marketing using? It? I don't care how marketers are using it. I care about how Pinterest, my, my audience is using it. And if you look at some of the reports, Edison research had a great one that came out the beginning of this year, Pinterest is still number three out of all of them. And you, read some of these other reports and they're like, no one's using Pinterest, it's with Snapchat. That's not true. People are using Pinterest, maybe not in the same way as when we first started, and maybe the content's a little bit different, but they're using it. It's still, even with the the stock um, that we just talked about at the beginning of the show that kind of dropped a little bit because it didn't have the users, it's still got a lot of users and it's still, <laughs> It's still got, and it's still making money. It's, it's, it's profitable, their profits went up. So, you got to take. You got to really analyze some of this data that you're getting in, and making sure 
it's applicable to you and your audience. And I, lo- I love what you're saying also about getting out of your bubble. For example, I know when I go to Pinterest and let's say there are like the kind of coaches or the social media teachers or whatever, and they all have pins and they all have these certain color schemes. Yeah. They're kind of pink with maybe a little bit of green. Like I know exactly, in my mind, I can totally imagine, I know exactly what that's gonna look like. And I, my new thinking in my own businesses is when people are zigging zag, figure right. out how to zag. And a lot of times it's going more basic and simpler. Yeah. It's not more complicated with more words. It's so funny, you know, we coach bloggers and so they'll send me their blog posts and say, what do you think? And I go, like, people are going to read this post. And I say read in quotes mm-hmm. while watching Netflix. Right. So therefore, right. you better believe people are not going to be reading your posts. Like they're not going to be like going, oh my God, she wrote all these beautiful sentences. No, I want that post. I literally, every single person when I give feedback is make it skimmable, make yeah. it easy to consume. Find me, the, I want to find the answer, serve up the answer. I don't care about your grandma. I don't care that you have like this expansive vocabulary right. and write these beautiful paragraphs. Like I just want bullets so just be thinking when people are like go look at what people are doing in your space and figure out how to do something different yeah um so like for my idea pins one of the things i tested and continue to work is that i started with just like a black a black you know panel with white text on it and that was doing okay well i took that same thing and i animated a paint explosion like just on the first pin and that worked because it was it caught people's eye like what is this and then they would stop and then they would read it engage with it so sometimes it's those little cheesy little tactics you know um i had one where i had you know i saw somebody was popping up from the 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 bottom of the pin and talking or something so i thought okay pop from the side you know like you said zig when other people zag i mean Sometimes it's just like, it's exactly that. It's like, if they're coming in this way, you need to come in the other way. (laughs) And then you stand out. I mean, it really sometimes is that simple. Yes. So can we switch gears now and talk about Instagram? Because um, I want to, and then we'll talk about TikTok. Because Instagram, I feel, has now come out and said, hey, we're not just pretty squares anymore. We want to, like, it feels to me, and I I mentioned this to you before we pressed record, that Instagram is chasing TikTok and Pinterest is chasing Instagram. So what are you seeing on Instagram that's working? So so it's funny that um, you said this, because I just had last Friday, Jen Herman, who is an amazing uh, Instagram person on our show, and we interviewed her because... um, yeah, because you know, they did come out and say that, hey, we're no longer a photo sharing app. We're this. We're going to be entertainment and video. And photographers are going, what? Uh, so and the thing is, they've always been that way. They're, they've always, after, you know, so long, they've been doing so much more and it's almost getting a little bloated. But um, yeah, I think with Instagram, they are, and they've said it, they've said we are threatened by TikTok. You know, that's our biggest competitor. And so that's why they came out with Reels. Reels just recently went uh, to 60 seconds. So you now have longer time to do Instagram Reels, which they are really trying to push. And so just like on Pinterest, we talked about, you know, giving the algorithm with it once. Right now for Instagram, it's Reels. Um, they've got, they're doing some really cool stuff with data. They're expanding their data out from 30 days to 60. So that they're giving, they're starting to give people more tools, uh, I think, to create content. Um, and also they're doing like the automatic, you know, language translation to stories, which I think is really, really cool that they're just going to translate the text you put on the screen. So they're making some cool stuff, but I agree that, um, first of all, it's not as polished as it used to be. You look at stories, it's raw, it's TikTok-y, it's the same thing with Reels. They want that education and entertainment. So I, throughout all platforms, it's gonna be, I don't think you can um, just go and sell anymore. I think mm. it's gonna be, you have to do edutainment. Mm. You, you can't, and it used to be like, okay, we're gonna give so many, you know, we're gonna share other people's content, we're gonna give these people, um, here's some pretty pictures, here's this and this and this, and then we'll do a sales thing. And then we're gonna do this kind of, kind of, you know, fun content. Then we're going to do a sales thing. Wait, I don't so you're saying like this is brands thinking this way? I, I think brands, businesses, you know, they okay, would post so they like, were, it was kind of like, know, they're trying, like provide you know, value, provide value, provide value, and then sell. Sell. 
yeah, I don't think that that model is going to work anymore. I think that those they'll get colorblind to any sort of sales thing. So you've got to work the sales into your organic content. You've got to work, you know, what you do kind of um, not in a deceptive way, but it, but in a way that's more organic and not so salesy. Uh, I use this example all the time. I may even use it last time we were talking. Uh, local company here, uh, they sell snow cones. And at the end of the day, what they do is they always sell out because it's just this really organic stuff and everybody loves them. At the end of the day, they have a kid that they pull randomly who gets the, the last cone of the day and they put it in, in front of a sign that says sold out and they make you make a sad face. And they post that to their Instagram. And people line up to be that last person because it's their kid. It's all this user-generated content. But that's selling their company. They're, they're selling, you know, make sure you come early because we sell out every time. We're that popular. You need to come see us before this happens. But it's, it's so it's this really back-end way of doing it. That's the kind of content we've got to create on all platforms. It's got to be mm. that edutainment, entertaining kind of thing. And Fear it, of missing out. Yes, I mean, like but it's, pulling it's on hard. all of these. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it, it's not just come by our snow cones. Right. It's not just like, hey, we're having a sale, you know, 50, it's, you know, buy one, get one free. Blech. That Okay, whatever. How how can that be uh, funny or entertainment? You know, so if you do buy one, get one free, you know, you could have somebody who's who missed out of that. came They came the next day and they were like, they, oh, I read it wrong. You know, so something, some sort of joke or funniness that you could – into that ad that you have the buy one get one free those are always going to do better mm. um, they're going to get shared more all that kind of stuff and i i know it's hard it's hard to be creative mm. uh, i think on instagram more and more brands are going to partner with influencers that can do that and it's because they already have an audience they can tap into that audience and so i, I think you're going to see more and more people and neil schaefer talks about this a lot we had him on our show too um about you know even this, these micro, I consider myself a micro influencer. I mean, I have a, on Instagram, I have a very small audience compared to some of the other ones like I have on Pinterest. The, but because those people see my content and the algorithm still shows it to them and I'm active and they, they follow me because they like my content, that is worth something to brands. Mm -hmm. And the smart brands are going to pay for that. So it's really exciting for if you're a small influencer or a micro influencer because brands are starting to see that oh my gosh i have greater reach and can impact more people with these smaller these smaller influencers than i maybe could if i get the kardashians i just released a new free cheat sheet you're gonna want to grab it is the five secrets successful bloggers online entrepreneurs and creators know to grow six and seven figure businesses. We work with online entrepreneurs all the time. We see these patterns over and over again. In fact, I'm going to give you one of the secrets. These people sell products and services to their audiences, which is again, why we are creating Milo Tree Easy Payments to make it even easier for you guys to monetize. Now, if you want the other four secrets, just head to milotree.com slash secrets. It's free. It's a one page PDF. And one entrepreneur said she keeps it on her desk so that she stays focused on the right things. Again, milotree.com slash secrets. And now back to the show. I feel like we have this crisis of confidence and we yes. don't know who to trust. And right. I feel like, Jeff, by you showing up week after week and I see you and I trust you, that that matters. So that mm -hmm. if I'm Target or I'm some big company that's like kind of nameless, like faceless, right. but if somebody like Jeff, I don't know if you're, you know, if Target comes to you and says, right. hey, great. Yeah. Um, you know, Target, we've listening. got all this like great beard care, uh, mm -hmm. male grooming stuff that I would believe you. And I think that uh, not like, like being that authentic self, that honest person goes a long way. So if you can't and, and be I, super creative, like let's say, you know, you're not like, hey, 
um, I do parkour and I can like right. edit myself right. doing all these cool things. No, right. like, but you, you do also have your voice and your yeah. point of view. And if you're willing to put that out there consistently, uh, I think people can smell that authenticity. Well, we haven't bathed since COVID. So, I mean, yeah, <laughs> we probably do smell of authenticity. But, but, I, but I, to your point is I think that, yeah, you don't have to be like some – stand-up comedian or something like that if you are honest and giving like if you're giving let's say just reviews on you know tools of like that you use in your trade and say you know what this you know i, I have some friends who are like painters and stuff they're like i really like this brush i really don't like this one and here's why and you do that week over week with different things and when you do say something and influencers come to you and say and, it, and one of the things you can't misuse that trust that audience has given you you can't just say i'm going to take it for this paycheck even though it's a sucky tool and I never use it, you have to be authentic. But but that is really worth something. And people really do trust you. They they recognize you. They recognize your voice. And they're like, okay, if if Leslie says to do this, I, I'm going to try it because I've been listening to her. I get in value from her all the time. She's kind of, I kind of trust her over Target. I don't care totally. that Target has an in, an end cap with all this stuff on sale. Leslie said to get this. I'm going to try this. Totally. So, you know, I, I, I teach this a lot. So I have a lot of like female people right. that we coach and I always say, be somebody's girlfriend who hooks somebody up. That's it. That's right. all you have to do. I'm the, I know, right. you know, I'm the one who runs into you and goes, Oh my God, I went to that great restaurant. Have you tried it? Yes. Or, Oh my God. Like if somebody says like, I like your lipstick that I go, Oh right. my God, here's where I got it. You should get it. Like all I want to do is hook you up and make right. your life a friend of mine was visiting you know and i kept texting him restaurants oh my god right, we found this right. indian restaurant yeah. hey right. if you're going to be on south congress go to this restaurant and he was so happy because mm -hmm. yes he can read yelp and yes he can see what people are saying but he's similar to me he gets you know he's into food i'm into food like mm -hmm. chances are i'm gonna like steer him correctly and right. and then and then we have something to talk about so just be thinking about I'm somebody's girlfriend who knows a little, who has that like inside, in, like who's tried the new mm -hmm. restaurant and I want to have, make, help, help you have a good experience. So that's always the persona that I recommend people like live in. What do I know right. that you might not know, but not from a arrogant point of view, but from a like, oh my God, I want to make your right. life better. So let's back this up a little bit and say, okay, what about somebody who's just getting started? Because I think that's the thing they're like, well, I don't have that, you know, thing yet. I don't have the, you know, the authority even by you know, doing something yet. So when I first started, I did a lot of stuff for free. I mean, I, and I would interact with people and offer things like, so I, I've told this story before. I started in Google plus back in the day. That's how I met and my network. And, you know, so just if, even if a network goes away, those relationships are still valid. So just want to say that right off the top. Um, that's how I got my gig that I do Guy Kawasaki's podcast and live show. Met Peg Fitzpatrick, who you've had, I believe, on the show. Um, and so by just showing – I mean, I did stuff. People would say, hey, I'm, I'm getting ready to do this live show. And I say, hey, I can create for you this video opener that I, I'll, I'll just do for you. Here it is. You know, you don't have to use it, but here you go. I thought it was cool. That I did a lot of that stuff when I started, and that made a huge difference. Now, I didn't ever ask. You can't go and say, hey, I made this, and then wait a week and go, by the way, I made you that. You need to have me on your, your show. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You have to give, and then that that does. It, it comes back to you. Um, I, you know, I made things for people's live videos. I, you know, I said, hey, I know this person. I know they're doing this. Uh, maybe you guys – here, I'll just, I'll just connect you, and then, mm -hmm. then back away. Mm -hmm. And all that stuff – it starts compounding interest hmm. and it, it makes a big deal. I was able to get from, from just commenting and making smart comments and on, on Peg Fitzpatrick's post on Google plus uh, we developed a relationship and a friendship and I was able to get Guy Kawasaki on my show early on, which hmm. that led to me getting people like the producer of pretty woman on my show. And I mean, all these guests because I had guy on. So all that stuff is compounding interest. So, I know it stinks and you don't want to hear that when you're first starting out, but sometimes you've got to do things that don't scale mm. that you have to really, you know, do some of these things that you're proving yourself mm. for a while and you can't ask for the ask right off the bat. What I would say 
and tell me tell me your thoughts on this. In the beginning, maybe 10 years ago, especially if we were bloggers, let's say I'm a food blogger, I create recipes on my own in my house, I take pretty pictures, I put them out, and it's like one to many. I right. broadcast it, I post it on right. Facebook and put my pins out there, and I don't have a close relationship with my audience because I'm like a publisher. Think of me like a right. magazine. Right. And today, as the internet has gotten much bigger, it has also gotten much smaller, meaning mm -hmm. it's weirdly one-on-one -on -one relationships. Therefore, I, for example, we're building a new product, which is called Milo Tree Easy Payments. And it is a way you might you might be interested if you are thinking of building a membership mm. i want to create a way the easiest way possible for you to get paid all we do we integrate with stripe which is a credit card platform and we give you a money button and you can put the money button on your blog on a sales page you can put it in social media whatever and then the best part is go host your membership wherever you want you could do it in a facebook group like i'm saying right. you don't have to learn a platform you don't have right. to have your people learn a platform you know one idea that somebody mentioned was hey i started a membership in a private instagram account and all yeah. i do is it's private and i let you know people asked to join who join my membership and they're in it and that's where I'm hosting it but my point is I have said and I'm going to probably say it on this podcast too come be a beta tester for me and what I will mm. do is I will get on the phone with you I want to hear what you're building I want to have you walk through my product so that I can see where your pain points are is this scalable absolutely not right, I've spent right. hours with people right. like our early testers, I'm on the phone with them at every single step because I want to intimately see how are they using this? What is it like? What, well, you know, somebody came and said, like we initially are like, okay, we're just gonna offer monthly. Like I wanna make it easy for you. So you can only now um, have monthly, uh, like a monthly membership. And right. somebody goes, well, I want a yearly, like I want to offer like two months free and have a yearly plan. And I go, no, 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 no. I mean, nicely. But I was like, no, 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 we're not going to do that. And there, she's like, well, I really want this. And I'm like, we have to think about it. David and I went back and we thought about it. And then we're like, you know what? Maybe we could do this, not from a technological point of view, but from a point mm -hmm. of like, I don't want you to have more choices and I don't want to have your customers have to make right. choices. So that's how we were thinking about it. And ultimately, we came back and said, no, you know what? We, we will give you the yearly plan as well. But like, if you want three months, we're not gonna give you the, like the three month right, plan. Right, right, but right. anyway, but it's like, everything is very intentional. So I'm no longer, I'm gonna build it and hope people show up. Uh-uh, it is me one-on-one -on -one, sitting down with the customer saying, what do you think? And I feel like the old way doesn't work anymore. It is me right. being the girlfriend, being the best friend, being the person who says, I made this video for you. What do you think? So think in terms of one-on-one, -on -one, even if it's not scalable. Totally, totally agree. And the thing too is once you start doing that and, and cause those are relationships you're building as well. So whenever I have an idea, I have all these people that I can run it by. Like I can say, Hey, Elisa, is this a good title for this downloadable, you know, and she'll go, no, you're stupid. Don't do that. <laughs> or I can go to Peg and like, Hey Peg, I'm thinking about creating this new podcast. Is this a good idea? Or is it just, am I just, is the audience not there? And she'll tell me those people, they charge lots of money for consulting, but I can call them up anytime and they will just they will help me out and the same for them if they they all call me and say like peg always sends me her graphics before she does a presentation for the most part and i look at them and i'm like those are great these why i don't need to say anything those are awesome and so but that relationship those are built up over years and but and but you have to make them you have to and you have to cultivate them and it's not from doing spammy stuff it's not from saying hey i shared yours you need to share mine you know that kind of a thing it doesn't work that way it's more of a friendship and in relationships and if you can do that then your business will succeed if you can't do that there are tons of different books and things you can read to help you with those interpersonal skills because you have to have those i think to succeed in business absolutely and it's it's kind of saying like whereas before that blogger who's blogging one to many is saying like this is it hey guys hey guys right instead of hey you 
I see you. Right. I see so, you and I see your problem and I want to make your life better. So one of my favorite people and I love his stuff and it's totally away from anything I do, but I watch his stuff all the time. His name's Lou Mangiello. He does WDW radio. He's this like the number one Disney blogger. And uh, uh, he's been doing a podcast from the beginning. You know, when he goes live, 300, 400 people are there. But he always says on his podcast, on his lives, he goes, hey, friend. And I ask him why he did that. He goes, I because I'm talking to people's ears. I don't want it to be, hey, everybody. Hey, you know, he's like, hey, friend. It's 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 intimate. It's to you who is listening. And I always loved how he did that. And, and I think that's exactly what you just said. It's like you're talking to that one person. And that's that word person. You never know what that relationship can happen. You know, what can happen in the future. So. Absolutely. Okay. So we we talked about this beforehand that back back like when Pinterest was just kind of throwing traffic at you, you could almost back into a business. Like, right. whoa, I got all this traffic. I could monetize this traffic just with ads. Like I got a business. And as tra as Pinterest now is kind of turning down the spigot and it's harder and you need to be more creative and you don't just have this audience that's built in. How, I, I wanted to ask you, how are you seeing bloggers pivot to find ways to make money in their businesses beyond just, I'm a content creator, I'm like a magazine? Yeah, so what I have seen a lot of times is one, you, you've got to, you've got to get, and we talked about a little bit just earlier, it's about the super fans is what we're talking about, the people who are, who love your stuff, no matter what you do, like Kim Garst, no matter what mm. she puts out, there's going to be people who are going to buy her stuff. And she could put out all sorts of things. So, but she had to get people to that level. And one of the things I think of, you, you have to create great content. You have to do it across, you know, I think you can't just write. You have to do some other things too. I think you need to do some video no matter. I just think you have to uh, anymore. But one of the things I've seen that's working for a lot of bloggers is a lot of times it would be like, you get them in your funnel with a free download. Now, I still think you can get with Pinterest some of those free downloads and bloggers can still use that. But what I really have seen that works really well, if you're trying to monetize your readership or monetize your blog, is to do tiny offers. Uh, and, and I like tiny offers better than a free download because it's training your audience that eventually they're going to have to pay. Um, and it's like you, Leslie. You, I mean, you do this Jillian. podcast for free. Oh, Julia, I'm sorry. Yeah, Leslie. Okay. <laughs> sorry, Julia. That um, you, you, you give all this stuff away for free. You're on shows, you're doing this podcast for free. But one of the things is, is, is training people for these small, tiny offers. And it could be a dollar 99. It could be a free, kind, I mean, it could be like a, a 99 cent Kindle ebook, uh, but training those people to pay some money because mm. your content is that good that they need to pay for it will help you when you develop that membership you're going to sell for 39.99 a month down the road. And mm. I really think that is one of the keys that I'm seeing a lot of bloggers go to uh, because then it's easier. To, like, even if you go to the Patreon route where you say like, Hey, you're gonna get extra content or extra podcast episodes or whatever. Um, they're already trained that, okay, his content's good enough that I'll pay for it because mm -hmm. I've already done it in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that bloggers really need to look at uh, instead of just like, Hey, here's a free guide. Yes. I think some of that's um, is worth doing. But if you're going to do that free offer, it needs to be worth free. You mean like it's one page PDF kind of a mm -hmm. thing, um, mm -hmm. something that that is value that has a lot of value in it. Like here's my 101 ways to do you know this certain thing. I think you need to charge 99 cents or a dollar 99 or something to get people going. I yes, I would say that always the the most successful bloggers that we coach sell stuff not yeah. affiliate stuff, their own products, their own things, whether it be that, and that's why we're creating Milo Tree Easy Payments because one thing you could do is create a membership and if you have those super fans, they will pay an amount of money every month to be closer to you, to get mm -hmm. what you're offering. I always, so when, like for new bloggers, I say, what are you ultimately gonna sell? because you're not going to make a ton of money, especially if you're just starting out with say right. ads or even sponsorships. Those are hard to scale. Those you have to really hustle to get. So what can you sell? One thing too that I, I 
recommend always is, let's say I, I you know, you join my list uh, and I get you on my email list in that first like welcome email, I tell you, hey, I'm going to offer you so much value. Some of it is free and some of it is paid. And then I'm going to send you to a tripwire, which is mm-hmm. where uh, where I'm offering a something to buy for a nominal amount, right. but it's exactly that you. I don't want you to see me as again, um, like a magazine. I want you to see. Well, I want you to see me as somebody who you value and you pay to consume what I offer because the value is there. Right, and and something else for your your bloggers may be something that I've seen lately that seems to be working is that. A, if you there's a lot of these newsletters that are cropping up like i get the morning Substack. brew yeah yeah substacks the you know the morning mm-hmm. brew i get um some some uh, what is it the other one from robin hood like investment stuff mm-hmm. and so those are becoming more popular these really in-depth things but i've seen a lot of people charging for those as well now yes you got to you got to you have to provide value with those and you know it could be part of the membership like if you join this membership you get part of this email you know, mm-hmm. uh, thing that I do every week, like a digest of, of sorts. And that can be really, really um, lucrative because more and more people are doing that. So, and you have their email addresses, which can be really lucrative as well. So there's a lot of stuff I'm seeing really happen with um, subscription newsletters and good content. And Hanley, who is a writer, and she does it for free, but her emails are amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't know. And by the way, stuff. that is, so we, you can do that with our product. You can create a paid newsletter, paid podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So think about, so instead when I say to people, think about the product you sell and they kind of freak out because they think like, oh my God, I, I'm not creative. Like I can't whittle. <laughs> I can't, right. you know, make a product to sell on Etsy. But what knowledge do you have that you could package in a way and provide it as say the girlfriend, you know, somebody hooking somebody up or somebody who motivates somebody. Like what is it that your friends come to you and say, you know, you're really good at that. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to what those are. And then the next step is how to package that and sell it. And this is even more important than saying, well, I will do that after I grow my Instagram followers or I will do that after I've, 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 I've gotten like lots of views on my, on my, uh, idea pins. It's like, no, no, no. It it's, you think about what, how you can package what you do, sell it, and then use social media to support right. that, to get the message out. And one of the things that I mentioned before, I'm a big fan of repurposing. So let's say you did create that that newsletter that you're going to send out it's like it's to, it's a great digest of whatever you're going to do well then you could actually read that and make that a a subscription-based blo- uh, podcast episode if you're just reading that content and putting that up there because some people may not want to read they may want to listen you know you can do that you can do it with video you could be saying that you know and going live and doing a section of that over on a, you know instagram live to grow your instagram followers you don't have to do the whole thing but you've already created the content why not use part of that to do, you know, this thing. You could take, you probably have a quote that could be pulled out of that content you just made to make a graphic that you could put out on social media to join your newsletter because you share great content like this all the time. So think about what you can do once and then, you know, that's why I love live video because then I can do a podcast, I can do graphics, I can do all that stuff. Because I think a lot of people starting out, they get really into like vapor lock. Like I got to create all this content. Well, if you think about it, you can create one piece of content and if you repurpose it in the right way, you could go everywhere. Mm. And so don't, as we're giving you these ideas, don't get overwhelmed, but think, Hey, you know what? I'm a pretty good writer. I could write a newsletter. Well then, okay. I could take that. I could record it as an audio. Oh, mm. I could also do that as video at the same time. Then I have video audio. And that's a special podcast I could sell and did it and add to my membership and all this stuff. And it, it gets to be like, okay, I can create a piece. I can create a video a week or I could create, you know, a, a, a newsletter a week. I can do that. And then you start thinking of how you can repurpose it. And it really does cut down on time. I love that advice. Absolutely. It's like work smarter, not harder. Right. Right. But again, and it's, I get, I ahead. get overwhelmed too. I mean, I, I, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I got all this stuff to do. But then if I think about 
So for example, I have got to get a presentation done for a, a virtual conference that I'm doing and I'm a horrible part procrastinator. I'm like, gosh. So I wrote the outline. I'm like, okay, I can use this for this, but then this could be a podcast episode. Mm. And then I can use this as I can actually package this and be part of a, you know, one of my sections in a product that I'm offering about how to do live video. I mean, until so you start seeing that it's not so much just like, okay, I'm just doing this one-off thing and it's not going to, you know, it's not getting me views or whatever. But then if you start thinking like, okay, I'm doing this for this, but I can use it for this and this and this and this, then it becomes a lot easier to create that content. And the other thing about that is like, Jeff, you've got a point of view, you've got a knowledge, uh, like you have a, a bank of knowledge. And if you can, t and I'm all about like, unless you are pounding your message over and over again to the point where you're sick of it, chances are people aren't consuming it, right? Because right. they're busy, remember they're on Netflix. So by creating more content based on say one piece of content, that message is getting, your chances of getting known for what you're good at goes up. Like it's just a right. way, it's almost like you throw the rock in the, in the pond and then there are those ripples, but it's like consistency of message mm -hmm. building off of one piece of content. Yeah. Like I repeat all the time, for example, B minus work, right? Popped in my head one day, it resonated with, uh, it was during a coaching session. It resonated with my group and I'm like, you know what? B my, it's so powerful to me as a, con I say it to myself all the time when I'm stuck. I'm like, Jillian, just do B minus work. And like, meaning I'm internalizing it myself and relearning it over and over again. And I want to continue to say that because it makes right. sense. And I want to be the person who says that. So you know what I, when I hear you say that, I say, okay, you need to offer t-shirts and mm -hmm. mugs and all that stuff, because that is a great thing. And it's also will activate your super fans. And then they will share the message out. So we'll be like, what, what does B minus work mean? Hey, Julian Leslie has this podcast that talks about this all the time. And this is what it means. But I, I love her thing. You need to follow her. Oh my gosh. See, I, I, I mean, that's like, like an explosion. Wow. Yes. And he's like, nobody will buy that. I don't have to set up a store and all this. I'm like, no, you could go to Teespring and do that right now and have a link. You know, you won't make a ton of money, but it's not, that's not what it's about. It's about activating your fans. Then when you do, like, if you're doing a live, then you have a giveaway. Hey, I've got these mugs that I'm going to send to you if you're the last. So there, you just oh kind of start compounding things of like what we were just talking about. Wow. Okay. You like literally, I'm like Teespring right now. Wow. <laughs> yes. Okay. Watch merch, merch. Right. And, and, and the, and the, the cool thing is, so this is just another thing is so like all my lives now I started going to Amazon and it's a kind of a weird thing. Amazon live. So whenever my show goes out, it goes to Amazon live. I have all my podcasting equipment underneath listed. I have, if I'm having a guest, I have their books listed. And it's kind of weird. It's like Periscope. It, it, I can't bring up the comments. I have to go look on my phone and I kind of ignore that while I'm doing my live. But I make a couple hundred bucks every time I go live because it's Amazon and it's the Wild West right now. And all it is is me taking the stream and putting it to another place, mm. uh, just adding that and learning how to do that and adding that. I'm not doing anything else, but I'm making a couple <laughs> hundred bucks every time because people see me. And they actually, if you're like, Kim Garst actually sent me a screenshot the other day as I was live and she was searching for a camera and my live was showing up underneath the screen because it was like, hey, you may be interested in this camera. Uh, and it was on Amazon, which is a huge market that nobody ever wow. thinks of. Wow. But it's just from repurposing one thing to another. Uh, and if you should, if I would sell mugs there, which I should, um, I get a higher percentage rate because it's my product and I can make money and people could, I could act so just from you saying that Teespring thing, adding it to Amazon merch, all that stuff. There's so many things that you can start. You don't have to do it all at once, but you can start adding things on. Like I didn't do Amazon when I first started. It's something you continue to add on and you think of different ways you can repurpose those things that you that you are doing already. Did you get invited by Amazon? It was really weird. I had a, an Amazon like affiliate thing that I had set up years ago and because I already had that. You just click a button and you can do live. You could probably go live if you have an Amazon thing over there. Wow. Okay. Because I did do a, a podcast is coming live where it is an Amazon seller. She's a fashion yeah. blogger and sells on Amazon every day, like yeah. almost every day. And so, uh, oh my God. All right, Jeff, 
it blew my mind. I am going to go do a bunch of research on this because this is exactly um, what I what I teach. So be thinking, everybody, product, but not product necessarily. It could be mugs, yeah. um, but it could be knowledge. It could be anything. And if you have those super fans that you've, I feel like I feel like this is coming full circle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything we've talked about, you got those super fans because you keep showing up because you keep providing value because you're the person who hooks somebody up with something and people trust you and they want to buy from you. And if you can a package that as a membership, easy, I can help you get paid with Milo Tree easy payments. So reach out to me, Jillian at MiloTree.com if you want to be a beta tester because I will walk you through the whole thing and want to pick your brain. Um, But it is about zigging when people are zagging. It is about probably being more basic than you think. Uh, It is about easy communication, lots of bullet points. It is about looking at what's what is working for others and seeing why or why that resonates, why you're like stopping the scroll on something and how you can then use those strategies. Like if somebody's coming in from the bottom, you come in from the side. So I feel like it's about being a little less robotic in your process and a little adding a little more spark or creativity, but a little bit, not a ton. Yeah. And a lot of it's just re- so I and repurposing. See- yeah, and I want to talk. So on that note, I would think about um, for your for your bloggers maybe a quick win for them. So they're like, I don't have a product, I don't have anything. If you've been blogging for like even less than a year, you have blog articles that you've probably done once a month or once a week or whatever. Take those best articles, package them in an ebook, publish them on on Amazon, and sell them for ninety nine cents. Mm. And then, I mean, then if you if you wanted to go live, if you have that ability and you want to do that, you could go to live to Amazon and you could have that. The cool thing about when you're on Amazon Live, you can highlight things in the carousel that's down below. You just highlight your book. I highlight my podcast because it's on app Amazon Music. And so I get more subscribers by going live and doing wow. all that stuff. So wow. do that. And then you you have a product. You can give that product away. I mean, you once you have, like uh, Jolene was saying, once you have a product, there's so many things that open up to you. And you don't have to wreck your brain about building the best product. You've probably already created the content already for a product. It's just repurposing it in a way that you can sell. And one last thing. You you do the ebook and you put it on Amazon. Ready? Crickets. No sales. And then you feel demoralized and that is normal and that just means more at bats more b minus work to try something else so we're going to say this you're going to be inspired you're going to go i'm going to put this together and let's say there are no sales that is learning it's not a failure and it's about shifting that mindset to go i did it i know how to do it i can do it faster the next time i have some new ideas on even using the same content but packaging it differently so please Think about it as learning, not yeah. failure. And and then the, if you do that, you can still say you're a published author. I love I mean, it. There you go. You know, there you go. There you go. Okay, Jeff, how can people reach out to you? You are such a fun – I love getting together. I, I feel <laughs> I like love brainstorming. It's, just like, it's fun. Yeah. 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 So it's how fun. can people reach out to you, learn more about what you're doing, catch you on Amazon? Yes. So the the show that I do, so I do Tailwind show on um, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Central. My show is on Friday. It's, it's all called Social Media News Live. It's at Fridays at 10 a.m. Central. That's the one that's on Amazon. I've been putting Tailwind's show to Amazon as well. Um, so um, those you can find at Social Media News Live across everywhere. Uh, if you, one of the things that we talked about things that are testing, one of the things that I am trying right now that I'm finding success with is uh, text-based messaging so if people would like and it's not spam it's nothing like that all i do is send out reminders about the live show 903-287-9088 that lets people get around kind of the algorithms because we all have frustrations where people signed up to see our stuff and they don't see it on facebook this way it gives them a reminder 10 minutes beforehand i'm finding a lot of success with that um people are signing up and then I can communicate them like first when they sign up, it's one to many, but if they can, they talk to me, it's one to one. So it's really kind of fun to build. We talked about relationships and networking, all that stuff. It's a great way to do it as can well. You, so can you of, say it again? What is the yeah. text? What is the phone number? It, it is 903-287-9088. It's if they're interested in the app, it's called the community app. Uh, and it allows me to do this text-based messaging. That's really, really cool. 
Cool. And I, that will be in the show notes. Well, Jeff, I just love having you on the show. So thank Thanks you so much for this. Yes. Thank you for having me. I hope you got a lot out of this episode. Whenever I talk to Jeff, I go away with a really long to-do list. I always feel inspired. There are so many different things for me to test, different ways to think about my content. Um, I just gain a lot of insight from him. I hope you have a long to-do list as well. And remember, if you want to start a membership, I would love to help you. Head to milotree.com slash beta tester and you can be one of the people who try out our product, who we work with to get you monetizing. That is my whole goal. I just want you to be successful and I will see you here again next week.